Hey, good morning. This is Vaughan in Nova Scotia, April 23rd. Uh, five weeks of lockdown now. Um, I just thought I'd show you my nice hat. One of my students sent me this hat. It's got the name of my pottery. She knitted it in there. How the heck she did that? I don't know. But it says Westcoat Bell Pottery all the way around it. So, um, so here's a, a great thank you to Donna Wenzel. Who sent me a really nice hat for the winter and um, and then something else happened nice today um, you've seen me using these in my other videos um, these are little tools I made to help smooth the rims out if you're using a groggy clay this was my first one which didn't work very well but this one works really nice uh, and then Freddie sent me this so thanks Freddie all right you 3d printed it it's a different version. It's a much wider version, so I'm going to try it out and see how it works. Um, anyway, I uh, hope everybody is in really healthy form um, and uh, things look a little optimistic with all the numbers going around at the moment. And um, I know we don't want to count chickens before they've hatched. Um, but anyway, so uh, we'll uh, see you later today. Nova Scotia puts out the numbers on at 3.30 every day in the afternoon. Uh, 36 new ones yesterday, so still not a lot. Most of them are in retirement homes, so it's really dangerous to be in a retirement home at the moment. But um, so everybody, you know, think about those people. Um, so what I'm going to do today um, is make some pots that need lids, and then the lids to go on the pots. Um, so uh, I, you have to bear with me. It might be a little kind of experimental. I've got a whole bunch of ideas on how to do this, but, but you might learn something and maybe i will too all right so let's put this down so you can see what's going to happen all right is that just about in the middle there okay all right so this is uh, a clay body that i use occasionally it's number 516 from pottery supply house in toronto it's a quite quite a smooth clay body It's grayish now, and it comes out almost totally white after the firing. So I'm gonna make a basic jar that needs a little lip on it. So it's just a wide version of a coffee mug. You could put honey in it, preserves, or anything you want. So if you're going to be altering the rim at all, you've got to leave enough clay up there to work with. So don't make your rim too thin. In other words, stop pulling before you get to the top. Oh, I forgot about this clay body. It's definitely got a, a tendency to... It's very smooth with no great grog, grog at all. So I won't push this clay body too far. All right, first thing you can do, and you can use a pin if you want to, you got a thick rim, you can cut right down into the center. This is the simplest of lids, really. Dribble some water in, put your rim, your tool, right in the center where you cut. And then you're just taking down that little inner bit so it sits flat. In other words, don't make it too thin when you, you the rim needs to be fairly thick. water out and there's always a little bit of water left so make sure you don't leave any water sitting on that flat ledge and then 
shape your bottom a little bit. It's nice if you get a nice wooden tool that you can do this stuff if you want to try the way I do it. Because I do that and that goes underneath there. And then I use the other end of the rib just to poke in a little bit above there. So it gives me a foot without having to trim it. Now this doesn't have a very wide rim, so I don't think I'll use that one on this one. But this is what these are for. Actually, the, because of the, the lid, it, I don't really need to do this. Because I've already cut that rim in half. Alright, so... Make sure it sits flat. You can press that ledge down a little bit if you want to have a little bit more. And then, of course, unless you're really good, you measure it. Make sure you've got the right width. My wheel, I'm in a boathouse and my wheel tilts downwards in the studio, so my water always runs that way. Actually, since I'm going to make a lid, I think I'll leave it on this back. Because I can sit the lid right next to it. These white bats that I made are really tight fits on the pins. Okay, so you just got a little jaw. Another bat in there. Those are the white bats are the ones that my friend made for me. These ones are just bought. I think they're called plasti bat, these ones. I just mailed your uh, little tea ball to you, Freddy, as well. So there you go. actually, let's cut this one in half. I don't need that much blade. So this is the simplest of all lids. Just press it down, leave a knob in the middle, push your finger under the knob, now remember people often have arthritis when they're picking up pottery and so it's nice to make sure that your knob is got a nice gap so you can pick it up. Flatten this down that's a bit big, I'm pretty sure. Yep. So two things, you can either push it in, or you can cut some off. Save that piece for my other one there. Now we'll measure it again. Perfect. Don't you like that word? Perfect. So that just sits right on top of that. There you go. So you got a hole, you got the lid, and that will sit right on top there. All right, next one. What can we do to elaborate on that? That's the simple list. So let's do the next one, which is pretty simple too. We need 
the basic jaw. This clay is really nice to throw, but if I'm doing big pieces with it, or you know, it, it tends to slump a little easy when you get it thin. And that's because there is no groggle, real uh, grit in there to give it any sort of strength. But it's a beautiful clay to throw. You just have to be careful when you make balls or bellied forms. Okay, so basic cylinder. Just give it a foot. Really, it's the lids that I'm making, so I don't need to worry about what the shape is, although it's nice to make it a slightly pleasing form. So I'm going to give it a little belly. And then I'll stop before I get to the top. I should go out and belly it a little bit more since it seems to not mind having that much of a belly. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood in Nova Scotia. There you go. So basically, you can see the form. It's just a cylinder with a little belly. get the water out and then this one try Freddy's oh yeah it works good just compressing down this one is probably meant more for a really large piece because it's got a really nice big rubber band gap the one I made is meant for mugs so it goes right over the top and it's meant for just small pieces and it's only meant for clay that has a lot of grit in it too because this clay is very smooth so there is no grit to push down basically these tools just like the leather and this is why i don't like using my leather here's my leather and i can almost never find it i mean when i, I leave it on the wheel and um and it, i have to wet it to use it these tools are sort of ready to go so um thank you freddie for making it i'll use it for my bigger pieces I just left some slip on with my finger. I'm trying to get it so I can measure it accurate, accurately. Okay, so we want to measure this. This one's slightly more complicated than the other one, but it's still pretty simple. So you get to measure the hole on the inside, and you got to remember that it hangs out about quarter, three eighths of an inch. The thickness of the actual wall is about a quarter inch, I think. So I've got to add about three eighths of an inch either side of this in the measurement that I'm going to do next. slide right onto your fingertips so you don't deform it. You, it doesn't matter if you deform it, it'll bounce back if you do, didn't have a diff, sort of bend in the wall. But try and spread your hands out each time you lift it up so you don't put the clay under any stress. All right, so we have a little bit of clay, actually. This is the stuff that came off the other piece, so I'm gonna stick it on there. I can cone it a couple of times and it'll be fine. I'm always telling my students not to do that. But I don't want to waste that little bit of clay. And that's what they always say. Anyway, if I press it in and out a couple of times like that, it's kind of like hand wedging on the wheel. Okay. Wheel wedging is something new. It's always worked for me. Okay, here you go. This is what's different about this one. I still want a knob in the center. Get some water in there so it doesn't dry out. Push your finger underneath the knob and remember to leave a knob big enough so if somebody has arthritis in their fingers, they don't have trouble lifting the lid. Because the worst thing you want is 
somebody nice to buy a piece of pottery and they break the lid because it slipped, slipped out of their fingers and then you have to make another one and it's always hard to make one fit anyway you've got that now we have this little wall it's it's going up and down so what I do using one of my fingers is just put my finger underneath little finger will be better for this one I think and then I press across the top of my little finger with my other finger I, I do this lid a lot and then you measure this is what's important that hole in the inside has to be smaller than the width of that caliper measurement but the outside edges has to be much bigger and so that one the hole in the center is is actually just a little small so I think I'm gonna put my finger in there and push it out just a touch and it's now just a bit smaller but the outer edge if I can rest that on there without marking it too much this is sticking out a lot further so that'll be easily big enough for that piece and maybe even trimmable down a little bit later on I'll get my marks off that I just put on <clears throat> I noticed somebody just subscribed who lived in New Zealand I got to check out that pottery yeah, I'm just I don't know why but I seem to have been getting tired at night by the time you go for a we're going for a long walk every night um, and basically finishing here about six something go for a walk it's seven something by the time you get home do all the dishes feed the cats and uh, cook dinner eat dinner do the dishes it's 9 nine thirty already there you go <coughs> she some sometime maybe I'll take a video of the walk we go on it's very pretty okay there's the first two that we did and there's the second two that we did all right so you've got two styles of lids both will work fine all right let's put this can I do this somewhere oh over here I guess dirty bats I'm, I'm in a, a bat cleaning period in my studio I've washed about 50 bats this morning I'm at the beginning now what I call my producing week where I make nothing but pottery every day for a week and then I'll fire the kiln again so what else do we have I have a little sketch with my lids so I can see what I want to make all right so let's do a different style again so I always round off the bottom it's just cut up into squares cubes out of the bag but round off the bottom a cylinder or a bowl or a bowl whichever shape you want basically because this lid would fit on a bowl it would fit on a cylinder <coughs> I have the pigeons all cooing behind me I don't know if you can hear it Actually, I think what I'll do is I'll go half and half. So it's not a cylinder, but it's not a ball. It'll be half and half. Okay, make my foot. I 
said in other videos that basically I don't have to trim my pieces. I can sponge the bottoms by, by, because I put that type of foot on the base. Now I'm going to shape it. I'm bending the metal rib a little bit. Get the water out. Let's try this again. This is slightly wider. There we go. Alrighty. Um, let's see. Calipers. All right. The what? That's the right. I was going to do that tire style lid. So. Measure that hole on the inside again. That was a bit too big. I, I never like to cut into the clay. You don't want to make your fit lids fit tight. Why? Because you're going to glaze them and then the glaze has a thickness, even if it's only a sixteenth of an inch on the lid and on the pot. So it adds, you know, an eighth of an inch and so your lid won't fit. So make sure you've got a little bit of a gap. I'm sure everybody's made that mistake. Okay, so take it off. All right, now when I'm doing pots that are gonna have lids, another thing to remember, I don't like to bend them when I'm lifting, lifting them off the bat because clay has a memory. Oh boy, have we been told that out. Probably a lot. My teacher told me that 47 years ago. <coughs> so if I bend it now, it might remember in the kiln and bend a little bit. So I'm just going to take it off. So I didn't bend it. Put the other clean bat on. Oh, these are kitchen countertops. Just, you know, I, I found these in a dump and all that. But anyway, I made some bats out of them and they work great. So, all right, so now we need another lid. <coughs> Let's do, for this lid, it's probably going to be a little bigger, so I'll have to take more than half of this ball. So that's probably half a pound. move your if you saw the video yesterday when I was unpacking the kilns that big tenmaku planter which is to die for it is so beautiful in the colors and it's got about five glazes on it um, all different brushing and painting and of some of them obviously have a different shrinkage rate than others and it's been tinking all the day all yesterday afternoon and all day today little tinking noise so some of those uh, glazes are just shrinking against the other ones which aren't and they're, they're making little craze lines which will be fine it's a planter so anyway let's see this lid I'm gonna push down a little bit and put my finger out like that come back and flatten the inside now you can do this with your finger or you can use a tool to do it now let's measure. Perfect. Oh, look at that. Perfect. Okay, sorry. Perfect is my favorite word sometimes. Squish in, but without moving the inside wall, because that was already good. And you've got a, 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 like a little rim that goes inside. Get it cleaned up. And then measure again. So that distance is the inside hole. And then this distance is the outside hole. And it's tight. So I've got some clay on there actually. So that's why it's tight. So it fits, but it's still a touch tight. So I'm going to use my wooden tool. I may have moved my inside finger a little bit and just push in just a touch. 
This should actually go down easily. Perfect. Alrighty, that's the lid with a rim, so it won't fall off easily on a pot. Now I'm trying not to bend this, remember. Since clay has a memory. All right. Now that lid, because it has the rim that I'm throwing on the top there, will have to be trimmed. And then a knob will have to be applied afterwards, which you can either put it back on the trimming wheel and I sometimes throw a little knob that way, or I can make a bird, make a whale, you know, something to actually attach to the other side of the lid for a knob. All right, so let's go for another one. I don't want this to drag on too long. 26 minutes, okay, we may have gone on long enough already. This will be quick. I don't want them to go over half an hour. After all, you guys have a life, right? All right. There you go, I'm racing now. Okay, see what I did? I made a rim on the pot instead of a rim on the lid. Oh, let's get the wooden bit off. Get the nasty bit off the bottom. Tool in, foot so I don't have to trim. I actually like trimming these days, so, but I still do that foot because if things get busy, I have the option of not trimming. And you don't have to trim if you throw really thin, which is what I do. So here it is. There's the rim. Get the water out. All right. So let's get this little guy up. Now I am going to lift this one off because I want to sit it on the other back with the other one. And before I bend it, I'm going to measure that. So it goes all the way around. So I've got the outer measurement of that rim. And I think you know what I'm going to do next. Do I have enough clay there? It's always a guess, isn't it? So um, grab a little bit of clay off the other one. It's better to have too much. Because there's two balls together, I'm going to push up and down a few times, do my little wheel wedging. It's a ball. Just going to make a flat ball. Don't go out too far. These are useful for small pieces. Make sure the hole. Oh, I can go out a lot more on this one. Perfect, but a little tight. So when I sponge it to get the water out, I'll put a little pressure on just to widen it just a touch more. Now we'll measure it again. Oh, 
it's a little loose. That's good. You can trim later on. So this one basically gets turned upside down over the other one. Now, I actually have about 12 different lids. And I only had a time to really throw four pots and four lids here. So there's the third one. And there's the fourth one. Alrighty, so I don't have time to, well, I do have time, but I'm sure you guys don't have time. Um, oh, let's see. So basically, uh, enjoy making some lids, all right? Um, I, I got 12 more, well, eight more, and um, that was just four. Taking up too much time, all right? Just keep making pottery. It's fun. Lockdown isn't so bad if you make pottery. All right. Good, good afternoon.